Hey, you guys, it is Jim. So this uh, beautiful, talented person is uh, Landry <laughs> Fleming. Did I say that just the way you wrote that for me? Right? You did. Yes. Thank you. Yes, you said it specifically, beautiful, talented. <laughs> In that order. Yes. And mm -hmm. she is uh, the very uh, funny and talented Penny Pingleton in uh, our version of uh, Hairspray, the musical play now. Dude, you rock. Thank you. I mean, you're awesome in that role. Thank you. Everybody loves it. Everybody loves the production and loves you, and it, and it looks like it's a blast. How has, and this is the first time you've worked here at the Paramount too, right? Yeah, So yeah. Uh, how is it doing the show? Is it as much fun as it looks to be? Oh my goodness, yes, it's a dream come true. It's it's everything. I've wanted to play this role and do this show for a very, very long time. Um, and it is a blast. It's very high energy and you have to focus so much. So it's certainly very exhausting, um, but in a really great way. And I, I tend to wait to audition for like dream roles until I feel like I see them and I see them at a theater where I'm like, they're really gonna take care of this show. And um, I love the work that the Paramount does. So when I saw the auditions for this, I was thrilled. I was like, I gotta get it. So, yeah. And we couldn't be happier that you're here with us, man. So I should tell people, uh, you're somewhat relatively new to Chicago, like five years, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. In the scheme of things, you, you grew up in uh, Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, Newcastle, Pennsylvania has Newcastle School of Beauty Culture. That is actually on the tourism <laughs> website. Did you know that? Did you go there? Did you happen to know anything about that? Or am I giving you fun and facts about your hometown? It's just so funny to me because... I've passed that. Guys, Newcastle is, it's not, it's its kind of a cruddy town. I mean, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We'll but edit that in post-production. <laughs> Don't you worry about that, Landry. But I've driven past that, that particular school, um, so it's really funny to me that they're like, this is it. We've got to put this on our website. Yes, and that is actually <laughs> on the tourism website. I'm like, that is awesome. But that woman went from there and then uh, off to college, spent a little time in Cincinnati, mm -hmm. and ended up in Chicago. But since you've been here, man, you've been rocking the world. You've worked at uh, Steppenwolf Garage, Chicago Shake, Sturry Lane, Circle. While you were at Circle, you were actually uh, in a uh, production, and you were nominated a uh, non-Jeff Award for Best Actress and also Best Musical. You care to share with everybody what that um, musical was, by the way? Absolutely, so um, it was Reefer Madness, the musical, and I played Mary Lane. It was a very fun, very fun show. And did you do tons of research to prepare <laughs> for that role, is I that mean... it? <laughs> <laughs> if you knew our director, uh, uh, the late Matt Gunnels, he was lovely and he certainly did his research. He certainly understood the topic. <laughs> nice. And Circle's a really cool theater. I yeah. mean, for those who've never been there before, it's a cool, intimate, really, and they do wonderful work there, man. They absolutely do. Wonderful. They absolutely do. Yeah. And uh, on top of all of that stuff, you were also uh, in Chicago Tribune as one of the hot new faces in acting in Chicago. I was. Which is totally cool. And also, Chicago Sun-Times picked you, they call it this Chicago Crush of the Month, where they pick an actor. <laughs> who uh, is up and coming, and you were a part of that. So you walked in here and kind of took the world by storm. I guess so. So how'd you decide Chicago versus anywhere else on the planet? Sure, well, I picked Chicago mostly because of what I'd heard about it. I had only been here once for maybe a couple hours. Um, and I loved it then, of course, but I mean, my mother and I just, we stopped at Cheesecake Factory and shopped at Filene's basement, and then we were out of here. Um, but so you drove literally from Pennsylvania just to come to the Cheesecake oh, Factory? No, no, no. Or you're on a killing spree? We were looking at, well, I mean, you know, we were running from the law. Nice. We thought we need to stop in a place where there's lots of people. They won't be able to see us. Good idea. Get yeah. some new clothes at Filene's. Get some new outfits. clothes, a new disguise, fuel up, get some cheesecake. So, uh, yeah, no, we, were, we were looking at a school. Um, but So we were only here for two hours. But I knew from what I heard about Chicago and about Chicago's theater, and it sounded right for me. I, I knew that it was quirkier, I knew that it was honest, I knew that they liked unique people here. Um, and I'm certainly a little bit different myself, I, you know, and so I felt like it would be, it would feel like home. And then I moved here and it really was, and I, I found a home in comedy and theater. Yeah, it was great. So speaking of comedy, uh, you have worked for a while with a comedy group off off broads right <laughs> yes off off broads with a z with a z yes <laughs> and it looks like a really cool show because 
you guys are, are doing kind of a parody of a burlesque show, right? Exactly. Comedy inside that whole thing. Yeah, so it's so fun. I mean, um, we have an MC who runs the night and we perform, but um, yeah, we parody burlesque. We, of course, have respect for the art form. Uh, we ourselves don't do it, but we parody it. So we each have our own individual characters and uh, costumes are a huge part of it too. We like to have costume reveals. Um, so it's really fun and it's a musical sketch, but we improvise a lot of it too, simply because we know each other so well at this point. You know, you right. make it up as you go. And you've also uh, started dabbling into the world of stand-up comedy. Yeah. Which is a whole different ballgame, being out there by yourself. Yes. I love it, though. Um, yeah, it's new to me, and I'm just starting out. Maybe if you guys come and see me um, at some open mics. But I love it. I love writing. I love... Well, what I love about stand-up is that the audience is basically your scene partner, you know? And you it's the same as when you're on stage, except you have... You have somebody else, of course, to act with, but you're still feeding off the energy from the audience um, and listening to them. Um, but when it's just stand-up, that's all you got, just you and the audience. So it's great to know what works and what doesn't and how to bring them back or, yeah, it's really fun to play with. And it's really nice to do your own material because I really like to write. So that's a fun, creative bent for me. And do you find that doing the uh doing the parody burlesque show with improv and also the stand-up helps you when you're doing, you know, quote unquote, straight plays or musical plays? Absolutely. Um, I feel like it's a game changer. And I think really any actor, it would be so beneficial for them to take a class in improv or anything like that because it's so important to be aware of of the, of the energy that you're getting. I mean, live theater is so beautiful because you have that audience with you. Um, and so we're all kind of a team. I, I, and I think it's really important to be able to hear without being distracted by the audience. Like hear what they are enjoying, get the energy from the night, feed off of it, work with them. Yeah, I think it's really important, yeah. I know that uh, you're a runner and especially a show like this, uh, I look at it and go, man, this puppy starts and it doesn't stop until you guys get an intermission. Yeah. And even backstage, you're running around with costume changes, whatever else, yeah. and then you get that 10 or 15 minute break, and then you hit it again, yeah. and it truly is. And I tell people this all the time, like, I'll put this kind of stuff up against any sport in the world. I mean, oh, yeah. you gotta be in shape, and you gotta do it. So are there things in particular you get you do specifically to get ready to do, especially big, because I keep saying every, every dance that you guys do is a huge production. Oh, yeah. It ain't some small little two thing on stuff like it's huge cast production yeah. and it takes a lot. Yeah. So do, what, do you do anything in particular to get ready to do all that stuff? Yeah, I do. Um, I, I am an, an avid runner, so I make sure that I exercise at some point before the show that my, so that my body is warm. But then also religiously I do yoga before the show before every show. Because it's also really good, it's good to warm up your body, but it also warms up your voice. Right. Um, so I do, yeah, vocal yoga before every show. Um, I know that the other night, and I keep mentioning this in the interviews, and it was really uh, Seaweed, Gilbert, who uh, gave me this little tidbit, is that when you guys had the scene oh. in the gym, and uh, he gives the uh, various things that he found in the nurse's office, yeah. including a condom, and then, all of a sudden, uh, from the reaction from the crowd, because I got to tell you, I've seen it a few times in rehearsals yeah. and whatever else, that the audience just died and really feeding off of your reaction from that whole thing. Like, how'd that feel? Oh my goodness, it was incredible, but it was just so much fun. It was so much fun because they were, they were right there with us. Um, it's one of my favorite moments that's ever happened on stage because they were having a blast and I was having the time of my life. Literally, like I just wanted it to keep going and finally I had to say my line, but it was just so much fun. We were all having so much fun. And speaking of time in your life, it seems very much like this cast, like you guys have connected. Oh yeah. And everybody truly enjoys each other. Yeah. I always go, look, can't hide that. You, know, you can't yeah. fake that on stage. No, you, you either can't. either get along or you don't get along and you can tell at times when there's tension. Yeah. You guys very much seem like a cool, gel, simpatico kind of family up there. Yeah, it's fantastic, like how close we all feel and we take care of each other and we trust each other um, and it feels like a family and yeah it's fantastic to be able to come here every day and feel so comfortable with everyone yeah 
Well, you are uh, an awesome, amazing actor. Well, thank you. Very, very talented. Thank we you. couldn't be happier to have you in our Paramount family. Well, thank you, you. You're killing it out there. Your castmates are, and we're proud of the show. So thank you for being here with us. Thank you for being a part of of our family. Thanks for taking the time, too. I should say to people, she has to go on stage in an hour, <laughs> so we have to let you go to get going. But uh, it's nothing but cool and fun to hang out. And so keep watching for her. And uh, like, I don't know how they would find out about when you're going to do stand up and some of that other stuff. Oh, sure. Well, um, I post about it on Facebook. Um, and I'll eventually get a website, which is my domain name is LandryFleming.com. So you can check it up there. But you can also uh, follow me on Facebook as well. Well, look, uh, Landry Fleming, you're awesome. Thanks for taking the time. Have a killer show tonight. Come see her. Come see your castmates, man. Thank you. Thank you.